This episode had me scurrying down rabbit holes in practically every scene. Ahoy, it's Jen from Dream Prague, and welcome to episode two, season four of the Be Pravye Explainer series. I'm going to cover some themes of the episode and a few little tidbits that sent me down a rabbit hole as I was translating it into English. I'm not going to do a linear recap because I want to encourage you to go to the link below and to check out the entire episode and use my translation scene by scene so you can see for yourself how the episode unfolds. If you want to watch my V Pravie explainer series, I make one new episode a month and so be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell so you get notified every time I make a new video. Okay, let's jump in. I když by to děda Josef nikdy nepřiznal, hrozně se v důchodu nudil a každý rok propadl nějakému koníčku. Okay, so we start with Josef in his PJs because he's newly retired and doesn't really have much to do. He's a man on the search of a hobby. And this will become relevant later in the episode. Now in every V. Pravier episode, there's a newsreel sort of intro. And sometimes it just sets a frame of reference for the time period. It could be like a cosmonaut going into space or a funeral of a notable politician so that you kind of can orient yourself in the years. But more often than not, um, two, the two to three short news clips will be directly directly relevant to the episode, and that's true in this episode. So here we have uh, 2,400 Czechoslovak girls competing in the official Miss Czechoslovakia contest. So this is the first modern iteration of the Miss Czechoslovak contest in 1989. A few decades earlier, beauty pageants were considered perverted Western commercialized view of women, and so they were really against it. In the 60s, in the late 60s, there was a contest for the idealized girl, but after the crushing of the Prague Spring, that stopped. So 1989, which is this episode, was really the start of the Miss Czechoslovakia pageant. And in this episode, Lutska, Hans's girlfriend, is competing in it along with her best friend, Claudia. Now this, of course, means uh, early Madonna-style photo shoot scenes and a lecherous photographer who's trying to take advantage of our naive Lutska. And you can imagine that Hansa is really not a fan of her participating in this pageant, and neither are her school friends. And Hansa actually says it's because they value things like democracy, plurality, and freedom of speech not stupid beauty competitions. And you can imagine that that doesn't go over well with Lutzka. So there's some tension there. But she sticks with it and keeps advancing to the next level. Claudia, her best friend, unfortunately doesn't make the final cut and so there's even tension between them, all due to this beauty pageant. Meanwhile, Josef, like I mentioned, has recently retired and the day before this scene, Jana's colleague has given her some small tomato plants and she just puts them in a bag and sticks them in the kitchen and he finds them and she's like, just, just figure out, just do something with them and he's kind of reluctant and what do I do with tomatoes? But he's got time so he does some research and learns about tomatoes and before you know it, he's building a hothouse at their cottage and becomes completely obsessed with growing tomatoes. Now Bobby, Babichka, his mother, kind of makes fun of him and refers to him as Przemek Podlaha. So I've never heard that name before and it sent me down rabbit hole number one. By the way, this episode had me scurrying down rabbit holes in practically every scene. But that's the really fun part about doing these translations because it's not just direct translations. There are cultural references that I don't really understand. It can be music, it can be wedding traditions or movie titles, something that seems more than just an offhanded mention and so I think, oh, I should probably look that up. As an example, let's say um, I went to a movie and my American friend asked me what I thought of it and I said, mm, it was kind of like a Lifetime original series. 
they would understand that to mean it was maybe poorly written, um, overly sentimental, but it's all encapsulated in that phrase. But if you're Czech and you simply translated, it was a lifetime original series, they'd be like, what is, I don't, I, that doesn't make any sense to me. There's just a whole cultural background to that expression that it's really hard to understand when you're translating from one language to another. So hence the rabbit holes. So as an example, later in this episode, one of Hans's friends casually remarks about this new great song he's heard called uh, White Toadstools, and it's by a band named Garage. And then Maya's sitting there and she says, oh, I heard that the Plastics were originally gonna do that song, but they thought it was too sentimental. And it was a weird like three sentence talk in a scene unrelated to music, but I thought oh, I should probably do a little research. So it turns out that the Plastics were a big dissonant rock band and the leader was arrested and has some sort of um, relationship in the protest movement to uh, Václav Havel. And this song, turns out that the background to this song is a true love story based on the death of a man who was hit by a tram and his lover who later committed suicide. And so this is a really popular rock song in Czech music history, but I have no idea about that. So it's so much more than just a line casually mentioning, hey, have you heard this new song? It's great. So when I uncover something sort of interesting like that, I include it in my uh, transcripts in my translations so you can go when you go to my website you can click on it you can read more because if you're interested in Czech cultural history which obviously you are um, I've opened up the rabbit hole for you so back to Yosef and his gardening and Bobby calling him Ptemek Podlaha so Ptemek Podlaha of course I had to research and it turns out he's the dude in the newsreel at the beginning of the episode he's talking about making a bird's nest or a, a bird feeder out of a plastic bottle. And his name wasn't even mentioned, but I recognized his face from Google Images when I researched Pshamek Podlaha. So this guy was called the guru of Czech hobby broadcasting. I don't know if you remember back in like the late 70s, mid 80s, there were a lot of sort of television shows about um, like this old house and carpentry or sort of like a Bob Ross artist style television show. And this guy was um, like a big hit in Czech TV and he used to showcase amateur hobbyists that would have like inventions and then hopefully they would get discovered in people would be able to invest in their ideas and sort of make it into a bigger thing than it was. And he was really into architecture and gardening. So when Bobby is sort of flippantly referring to her son as Pshemek Podlaha, it's because he took an interest in this obscure thing, tomato plants, and he's like building it into a big hobby. So I guess the point of my big tangent is that you should pay more attention to the newsreels at the beginning of each episode because they are actually really relevant to the themes of the episode you're about to watch. Meanwhile, Yarda and Martina are getting married and it's time for their families to meet. So here we have them meeting um, at their house for dinner and Martina cooks frog soup. And as we know, Yarda's parents, especially his mother, um, they're both a bit hoity-toity and Martina's family is a little more common or a little more traditional. Martina's mom is kind of over the top enthusiastic about the pending nuptials and they start to talk about Czech wedding traditions and of course I don't know what they're talking about so I have to do a little bit of research down a rabbit hole um, so they come up later in the wedding there's the dish shattering on the floor and then the bride and groom have to work together to sweep it up to show that they'll work together um, there's the horse collar that they hang around Yarda signifying that his wife will sort of run the show. Um, and Yarda's parents seem really disappointed in his choice of future in-laws, but they're sort of learning to put up with it. And um, the guests have to pass through this archway of flowers and they have to pay to do it and then take a, a shot. And of course, Scarlett, because she's the mother of the groom, they give her a big glass because this is a country wedding and the goal is to get loaded by the end. And poor Scarlett can't believe her precious son is marrying into this countryside family. Now, Lutska does not plan to attend her father's wedding. There's some backstory, there's not a great relationship there, but 
also she had to rehearse for the Miss pageant and Hansa had already agreed to go so he ends up going by himself. Finally, when she races there at the end of the evening, she finds Hansa, who's had a little too much to drink, getting cozy with another one of the wedding guests. So that doesn't bode well for their future. But I'm told it all ends well, so we'll see how it works out. Okay, in the next episode, they're off for a beach holiday in Yugoslavia, and you really get a lot of sense of what it is to be Czech when you see them go to another country. So be sure to check back to that episode. Hit subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when I make new videos. And be sure to go to the link below so that you can check out the subtitles and watch this great episode. Okay, see you in the next episode. Ahoy!